Hi everyone, this is Elisa from Inaya's Toy Box Crochet, and I'm here to show you what I've been up to. So my whips and phones, basically. And this is my first phone, not the first one that I actually finished, but it stood up so nicely I wanted to show it off. Um, this is the Red Panda pattern by Le Simeon, and I showed you it when it was a whip, and I finished the crochet part soon after. But oh my gosh. I have been going through some sort of weird kick. I usually make my proje projects and I'm excited to see the finished project. I mean, I, I'm working hard on making it and I want to see what it looks like. So although I don't like the sewing part of it, I don't like the embroidery part of it, I do it so I could see the finished product. But this time I was kind of like, eh, I'll do it later. So this little guy has been crocheted and in pieces for almost a week. That is not something that I usually do. <laughs> so here he is. This is a blue panda, not a red panda, because my son requested a blue panda. Um, he was fun to make, but not to sew. Today, I was, I was just thinking. I did add a few extra rows to his head because I was having a hard time sewing it on. So I added some uh, an extra row of decreases so I could actually get it there to where I wanted it when I sewed it on. So that's my first faux. It took me a while. The poor guy, he was sitting there forever waiting for me to finish him. And I didn't finish him. Uh, that's, I think, um, yeah, that's my faux. That's one of my faux. Uh, amigurumi wise, I haven't been very doing very much. I have done a little bit more than just that, but not much. I finished a poncho, I mean a capelet. I finished a capelet. Can you imagine if you told me a year ago that I was going to make a wearable, I would say, ha ha, not likely. But here I am, I made this capelet. This is the Anna capelet or Anna poncho capelet. Uh, yeah, I found the pattern on YouTube. I will link it. I had fun making it and oh my gosh, this was so quick to make. I made it in a day. I was really amazed at how quick it was to finish. I was like, wow, I should make things more often. Wearables, but I'm still terrified of wearables, so I probably won't. <laughs> I liked it, it was really nice. I used uh, the Hobby Lobby yarn, I forget what it's called. Um, but uh, the colorway was Finch Feather. I only had two skeins of it, and I used both skeins up. They're done. <laughs> it was fun. My daughter loves it. It was for her. She made. It. She loves it. And so, um, yeah, that's what I have. So amongst other stuff that I have been making is these little stress balls. I'm making them for, excuse me. I need to sneeze and it's not coming out. Do you know that awful feeling? I hate that feeling. Anyway, so uh, Rose Light Crochet is a... Uh, here it comes. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Maybe I should have tried to hold it in. Anyways, let me get back to this instead of talking about my sneezing. Uh, Rose Light Crochet is collecting um, items, crochet items, for a charity called Wings. And one of the things she wants is stress, stress balls. And so I made some stress balls. As you can see, I'm not finishing anything off. <laughs> that is just like a three second job of weaving in the ends. And I didn't do it. So I made a few of these little balls. I'm gonna feature them in a video on, uh, you know, it's an amigurumi video. I'll post it in a couple of days, you'll see it. I didn't make it yet. I'll probably make it sometime after this because yeah, we're going, uh, we're having renovations done in our place and not in our place, in our building. And this week, the guys who are renovating has been in our unit and it has been way too noisy for anything, for anything. And so, um, I'll probably try to crochet everything today. So when they come back on Monday, uh, I mean, film today. So when they come back on Monday, I won't have like, oh, I should have done that or I should have done this. 
So those are the stress balls I made. I'll probably make a couple more. And I also made some granny squares. Now I have to admit, granny squares terrify me. Not because they're not pretty and not because I don't think I'll be able to do it, but I am so afraid I won't get the sizing right. Um, I forget the designer, but I will link it down below. It's a YouTube video uh, of the person who designed this granny square. And what terrifies me about the granny square is she strictly wants six and 12 inches, which absolutely makes sense because she's putting together so many granny squares and she needs them to be the right size. So it fits into the blanket. I'm terrified of not getting it right. This one is a little under uh, under six inches, but when I block it, it'll be six inches. And it gave me confidence that I'll be able to do it. I didn't have to do anything extra. It worked out perfectly. And so I was really happy and it gave me confidence. And I thought after making this, I'll make a few different types of granny squares that I admired. Uh, I'm not the type of person who'll make a blanket, but I could send it to her and I get to the experience of making granny squares and she gets squares for her blanket. Not yeah, so I got overly confident and I took out this bag of day pattern, which is absolutely beautiful. I can't tell if you can see it. Let me see. All right, so I made this bag of day pattern. Obviously, it needs to be blocked. I made this one and I thought, hey, this is beautiful. That one worked out. I'm sure this one will work out. It did not work out. It was not 12. It's like Crystal from Bag of Day said her one was 13 inches. Uh, so I thought I crochet tight. It'll probably work out to be, you know, 12 inches. It was nine inches. Nine. Sorry, I had to have some water. It was nine inches. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's no way I could stretch this out to 12 inches. And so I added an extra row right here. And then I went ahead and changed the colors just because. And I added two extra rows right here of just double crochets to get it to, I think this is 11 inches. It absolutely does need to be blocked. I actually started, I actually made another row and ripped it out because it made it exactly 12 inches, but this needs to be blocked. It is not gonna go into a blanket the way it is right now. So I, um, I'm hoping I could stretch it up to 9 and in 12 inches and it'll work out fine. Sorry, Rose, if I can't. But seriously, my granny square making days are over. There, <laughs> I just can't get the sizing right. It's super frustrating. So then I thought, what else? I, I'm kind of, I don't know. This is a weird mood for me. Like I want to crochet, but I don't necessarily want to do amigurumi. Um, and so... I will move on to my whips and I will show, oh no, I have one more thing to show. My purse, I finished the purse, which is, where did I put it? Here it is. I finished the purse I was making, the star stitch purse, also bag of day. I love it, it's beautiful. I love the yarn I may used. I love everything about it. Um, I didn't like that the bottom kind of hanged. So I added plastic canvas and I made, you know, like the bottom again. The way the same as this part, the bottom of the yarn, uh, the purse. I made another panel of it and I sewed it together with uh, plastic canvas inside. And here it is. All it needs now is the handles. Why isn't the handles done? Because for some reason I'm not finishing anything off. It should have been done. It really should have been done. I have the handles. I just need to sew them on. That's all I need to do. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> like I said, this weird kick where I just want to crochet, but I don't want to finish anything. Uh, like, not finish anything. I want to finish the crochet part. I just don't do the, want to do the finishing that's required of everything you do. So now I'm going to move on to my whips. I am making, oops, some of the stitches popped off this. Uh, I am going to also, for Rose Likes Crochet, I am making a pencil case. So this pencil case, the idea is I was gonna make it long. I'm still gonna make it long. Uh, long and then close it on top with a button. So all the pencils kind of go in this way, not lie down, but this way. Uh, I just felt if it lies down with the bigger hole, it's more likely everything will just spill out of it. 
so I thought I'd make it long but I think I made this part too wide like this will fit a whole lot of pencils it really will uh, I'm gonna finish this one the way it is but uh, the next one I will make maybe to this this size uh, hopefully I'll make a next one it depends on how much time I have and whether I'll be able to finish it to make a next one I don't know oh I wanted to show you this oh I'll show it to you later let me just finish with my whips so another whip which I am gonna frog but I wanted to show it to you is uh, I found online brand this uh, bag sorry it was stuck under me uh, it's called the ball bag so I started it off okay I want that bag I still want that bag and I'm using Lion brand ice cream cotton blend which I knew I wanted to use for this bag and so um, the only thing that was stopping me from making it was that I only have two skeins of this yarn and I wanted the whole thing with this brown color because I thought it was really beautiful the brown color and I thought it's such a beautiful bag on the specs of the bag it says that the bag is the circumference of the bag is 27 inches with an F hook using Martha Stewart hemp brand yarn I've memorized everything that's not like me why have I memorized everything it was because I was very torn on whether I should make this bag or not or whether I should buy more yarn and make this bag or whether I should just start this and see how far I get and maybe use different yarns to finish it off I had a whole lot of thoughts about this bag so I decided finally that I am going to make the bag and if I need more yarn I'll figure it out when it gets to that point so I started to make the bag it's supposed to be 27 inches the circumference is supposed to be 27 inches look at this I am two rounds of increasing away from finishing the pattern of this bag this is not 27 inches this is a tiny bag look my hand is not 27 inches okay so fine I didn't finish all the increases so maybe it could could have been I don't know 20 should it be 25 inches when you're almost finished with all the increases this is what I got this is not 27 inches this is not me it's not about how tight I crochet because there is no way using the recommended hook size for this bag using a worsted weight for yarn like recommended for this bag that I crochet so tight that I get this what is it maybe five inches big circumference of a ball that, of a bag that's supposed to be 27 inches I double checked after that I'm like maybe they meant 27 centimeters although this is not 27 centimeters but it says 27 inches it says 65 centimeters or 65 point something centimeter this pattern I am blaming the pattern for this because this pattern is clearly wrong I used the hook they said I used the yarn size they said and instead of 27 inches I got five I am pulling this apart I read the pattern I have a good idea on how to make it and I am going to restart it um, I'm going to make more increases per round this is like six increases per round instead of six increases per round and to tell you the truth when I read the pattern I should have known that that won't be a big bag and I should have stopped just then and there because I have enough experience with that uh, I'm going to remake it I'm going to do it with uh, more increases per round and make it a big bag like I don't maybe not 20 27 inches but I want something bigger than that because really I don't think I could hold much into it in it um, so yeah this one I just thought I'd show it to you it's the line brand ball bag I am NOT gonna make the line brand ball bag um, I just wanted to show you that it's not all me I thought it was all me I really did and this is just proving that sometimes it's a pattern that's a mistake so the last thing I want to show you is this I have started making my mermaid I woke up one day uh, midweek I think uh, it might be the construction that's gotten me out of this zone though and I was like I want to create and when I say I want to create I don't mean like create a crochet item from a pattern I meant I wanted to create a pattern 
And so I have been struggling with this mermaid. Um, let me show you the original mermaid. I've made it. It's my mermaid. It's my pattern. I did not, I was not completely satisfied with this pattern. I remade it and I got really angry with myself because that wasn't, I wasn't completely satisfied. I was nowhere near satisfied with that one. So this is the mermaid. This is the tail that I had made originally. And I was planning, I made it in December, November or December. And I already told my testers, yeah, I'm working on a mermaid. You're going to have a mermaid pattern to test soon. And then I scrapped it. I did not like it. This one, it's almost there. It's almost there. But she's not quite what I'm looking for. Here's her face. I don't like the way her nose is. I need to figure out her nose. The tail is okay. Everything, it's just almost there. So I immediately made another one fixing the stuff that I didn't like. And that one came out worse. So then I took a break. Like I said, I made these in November and December and I took a break. And even this one, I am not, I'm not pressuring myself in any way to finish this tail and to do it in any way or for any pattern, for any date. I'm going to do it as I like, as I'm happy with it. And I am not pressuring myself to do anything but make it. And if it turns out, then I'll sell that pattern. And if it doesn't turn out, then I'll make another one another dime in the future. I have a couple ideas for tails that I, I would like to try out. And uh, I started with this one. Obviously, I frogged a few times. I ripped it out a few times because this is design. And in design, nothing works out the first time you make it. And you need to frog it and you need to thing it. And I kind of regretted. I'm using um, Lime Brand Comfy Cotton, cotton for this. Uh, what's the colorway? The colorway is uh, Blueberry Muffin. I really like the yarn. I kind of regret, and I don't regret it at the same time, because I love the look of this yarn, but you know, if I had just used a solid color without this twist of yarns, it would be easier to frog. But I'm liking it so far. But anyways, that day I woke up and I was like, I want to make and I want to design and I designed and I worked on this all day. I know it seems like very little, but for design, it's okay. It's not bad. Um, I frogged it a few times. I frogged parts of it. I pro frogged all of it. You know, the usual stuff when you're going through designing stuff. Um, and then the next day I didn't want to design anymore. So this is basically that day when I was feeling very inspired and wanted to design, I made this and I haven't worked on it since. Um, so I thought I'd show that to you. Hopefully I will have a mermaid. I'm not putting any pressure on myself. Hopefully I have a mermaid suit, but I wanted to show you the stitch marker. Isn't it pretty? I made this stitch marker. Okay. So this, okay. Uh, Indian clothes are very flashy clothes. They're really, really flashy. And this was like one of the flashy buttons that was hanging off my sister-in-law's dress or clothes, outfit. Okay, selawar kameez. And it fell off. Like she lost all of them that day. And this is the only one that we actually found. So they were not replaceable. They were done. There was like five of them and they were all gone. And this is the only one we found. And so I said, hey, can I have it? And she said, okay. What was she going to do with it anyways, right? They all fell. They all fell off. And so I've had this in my bead, um, my bead container for the longest time. This one lonely bead waiting to be used. And I had no idea how to use it. I just knew I liked it. And then I made it into a stitch marker. Isn't it pretty? This one's mine. <laughs> well, not that I'm giving away a lot of my stitch markers, but I thought I'd show that to you. I'm going to show you the rest of my stitch markers that I made. Uh, I made a couple. I found, um, I remembered when making this bead. This was uh, a pattern, again, from uh, YouTube, because most of the, my beading patterns were from YouTube. And I made a few of these without any... I just really liked it, so I wanted to try it out. So I made it without any intentions with it. Like I wasn't planning to put it in a necklace. I wasn't planning to do anything with it. I just wanted to make it. And so I made three or four of these little beads. And so I turned one of them into a stitch marker. Hope you like it. And I think I have one last one. Yeah, so when I took out my beads, I found another charm that I didn't know I had. And so 
had to make it into a stitch marker. So this is the last stitch marker I made. I added some beads to make it look pretty and then I put it onto, you know, this. And so those are the three stitch markers I made sometime in the past two weeks. I don't remember when. Uh, and the last thing I want to show you, this is so exciting. I bought, uh, I bought this ball of yarn. Let me see if I can show it to you. It is classic wools from Patons. It's roving style wool. It was on sale. It was on a really good sale. This one is called uh, Pale Blush. And I've been wanting to dye yarn for a long time, but I don't want to get chemical dyes because I live in an apartment. I believe I say this in every single video, but I'll say it again. I live in an apartment and I don't have space for dedicated dye equipment. And to tell you the truth, I don't have confidence in myself to invest in dedicated dye equipment. So I knew I wanted to buy yarn that was wool so I could dye it with food coloring. And so I took that rose colored yarn and I dyed it into this. Isn't it pretty? I had a lot of fun doing it. I watched a lot of Chemnitz. Um, and so I dip dyed it. It's a bulky weight yarn. The reason, the only reason I bought it was so I could dye it. Um, it was cheap. It was the only colorway that was on sale. And so I picked it up and I bought it and I dyed it and I'm going to make something out of it. Probably a bunny. Maybe not. I'll see. I'll make something out of it. It is bulky yarn. It is really thick yarn. Um, but you know what? I wanted to dye and I didn't want to invest too much on my first dye. And so I got this yarn and I don't regret it. And uh, I, I made it, even though it's bulky, I will make something out of it because this is the first time I ever dyed yarn. I have since gone to nitpick and bought some varied yarn. And I will dye it as soon as I figure out what colorway and what whatever. I need to do stuff with a little bit of planning. I can't just go there and put food coloring in and do whatever I want to do, which would be amazing if I was able to do that. But for some reason, I need to plan things. So, uh, yeah, those are all my whips and foes and my little dye job. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this little guy was not hard to make, but boy, did it take me a long time to finish him. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to hear more from me, please subscribe. Thanks so much. Bye.